Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're in the backyard with the Mega Solar Scorcher. Some of you long-term fans will remember this thing because about five years ago, it's the project that launched my channel. It's made from the front of a giant TV screen and its whole purpose is to take sunlight and concentrate it into a solar death ray so powerful it can melt holes in concrete. So if it can do that, is it powerful enough to ignite thermite? Well, today we got blue skies and the sun is shining and Killian Fitzpatrick really wants to know. So Killian, we're doing this experiment for you. Now, Killian has a good point, guys. Thermite burns at about four to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is extremely hot, but it's also very, very difficult to ignite. Usually sparklers or some kind of magnesium strip are used to ignite thermite because it requires an ignition point around 3,000 Fahrenheit to even get the reaction started at all. Now, I know that the solar scorcher will get somewhere up around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit because I have used it to melt copper, but will it be enough to actually light off thermite? That's the purpose of this experiment today. So to get this experiment started today, we're gonna to mix up a fresh batch of thermite. That's a three to one ratio of iron oxide and aluminum powder. We're gonna stick all that in a terracotta planter pot lined with aluminum foil and set it on a cinder block to a point where it matches the focal point of our solar death beam. And at that point, we're gonna set the frame, stand back and watch what happens. Now the sun's hiding behind a cloud right now, so let's take the opportunity to mix up a batch of thermite and get everything in position so we're all ready to go when it pops back out. Funny story, the reason my solar scorcher is marred up the way that it is is from that 4th of July experiment we did with black powder that made the big mushroom clouds and spewed out all kinds of black powder ash. That was like four years ago. Dang. Got this a touch more for kicks. The aluminum should help give a little bit more reaction time so the thermite gets a little hotter before it spills through. All right guys, it's time to focus and light up our thermite. I got a little jar over here filled up with thermite to the top. I've got it set up on some two by twos with a little terracotta base underneath. All I'm gonna do now is take the lens from our solar scorcher and tip it over until it focuses onto the thermite and then I'm gonna hold it there until it lights off, if it does at all. I got my little wood two by twos lined up here with a hole in the center. That's gonna go right over top and it should allow our molten metal to flow down the bottom. All right, let's light it up and see if we can get it to work. Here we go. I can already see it's gonna focus. Here we go in three, two, one. Oh, dang. Wow. Wow. Wow, oh my goodness, come look at this. Look at the way this is glowing. The pot is cracked, everything is on fire. We got a ton of metal down here. Woo, doggy! Look at that pot. I'd say that was a success. Wow! Oh my goodness, look at that. Pieces of wood are charred and burned and we are left with a cool metal residue. When that cools down, we're gonna have to chop it open, but that should be iron, molten iron. And look at that, our pot is just disintegrated. Absolutely, look at that. Super brittle, absolutely destroyed. That wood, I can't believe that wood just went up in no, no time flat, completely charred. And this is still glowing. That was fun, let's do that again. Guys, I'm a foot away from this right now and it's been about three minutes since this reaction went off. It's still incredibly, incredibly hot and you can see this iron is still glowing. My terracotta pot is completely destroyed. It's a really good thing that I took the solar scorcher and ran when I did because there was a shower of sparks spewing out about four feet in every direction and it was burning about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is absolutely amazing. With the ignition point of thermite being so high, I was expecting quite a bit of a delay, maybe 30 seconds to a minute before it lit off. But no, that thing was instant. Like the second the focal point made contact, the thermite went off. And I have to say, I'm actually quite pleased about those results. Let's do it again. I got another pot, pretty good amount of thermite in there as well. I'm using our old blocks here and just kind of put them in a V shape so we can set this down over top. I've built this up about as uh, high as I feel comfortable. There's no way to support it up and really see the lava flow like we did before. But um, at this point, I'm just really excited to do it again. Oh look, it's actually so hot. The wood just caught on fire. Oh well, flames are not going to ignite our thermite, so I'm not really worried about that too much. We'll just leave that there, set the solar scorcher up, and go for round two. 
<laughs> Man, it was a good thing I got it out there in a hurry. You have to make sure I do that again. Like that. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. I just lost a whole bunch of our thermite there. Salvage what you can. Okay, well, we're down about an inch, but no worries. I'm sure we'll still make it work. All right, let's see if we can get that to work again. Here we go. Oh, the focal point isn't quite as concentrated this time. I think it's a little bit too high, actually. Oh! <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, that, that was cool. Look at that. You know what impressed me about that is all the metal came out into the dish under, underneath. I thought it was gonna spew out to the side here and overflow, but it didn't. Looks like we captured it all. And looking down in that pot there, you can see all of it has reacted. There's nothing left. Maybe just a little bit down the corner, but it all went through that hole and filled up the gaps in the bottom. Wow! That was great. Pieces of wood are like fused in there. That's where all the molten metal went in. It just went in and filled all the gaps that were there previously, which makes me wonder could you possibly make a mold out of sand or something of that nature and use thermite to cast iron? Hmm, maybe an idea for another project? Well, let me know in the comments below. All right guys, it's been about 20 minutes since our second reaction took place. It's had a chance to cool down, so just for fun, I went and grabbed a hammer so we could crack this metal open and see what happened inside. This is still surprisingly hot. You can see the uh, terracotta base here. It's kind of stuck to something there. That's well cracked. In fact, if I hit that a little bit, we can get it just to flake off, look at that. So what are we left with on the inside here? We got big globules of this, uh, what looks like metal. If we hit it, it's actually pretty solid. I mean, it is cracking. And that one's split in half. If that was iron, I wouldn't expect it would be splitting in half like that. But look, right there, you can see a little bead of iron and little beads of iron throughout. What appears to be metal almost looks like a metal foam. I mean, if you look at a cross section of that, you can see hundreds of little bubbles on the inside, which is kind of cool, but it's not solid, is it? It's still toasty warm. It's cooled down quite a bit, but it's still quite toasty. Ooh, look in there. That right there is a big glob of iron. That's quite a bit harder than the other ones were. Oh, I still broke it though. There's another piece. They all seem to be hidden inside. It's like, what's inside this one? What's inside this one? So this is pretty cool, guys. We started this experiment today on a quest to find out whether we could use sunlight to ignite thermite, which has a very, very high ignition point. We mixed three parts of iron oxide with one part aluminum powder to generate a homemade thermite mixture. Then we brought back the solar scorcher from a previous project to concentrate the rays of sunlight into a solar beam of death. The question we came here to answer today was whether that would be enough to ignite thermite. And after these experiments today, I think we can all conclude the answer is a resounding yes. Not only will it ignite thermite, but you saw in the first experiment, it lit off within seconds. And even on the second experiment, even though the focal point wasn't ideal, it was still enough heat to initiate the reaction. And it's only 85 degrees Fahrenheit today. Well guys, now you know how to harness the power of the sun to initiate a thermite reaction right in the comfort of your own backyard. But don't do it in your backyard, leave that to me. And a huge thanks to Killian Fitzpatrick for suggesting this experiment today. Killian, you can go check your YouTube inbox. I'm sending you 25 bucks. That's it for this experiment, guys. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll be looking for you in the next video. Talk to you then. I love how it just bursts into flames. It's like, boom. Oh, I got some of my clothes. That's not good. This stuff doesn't come out.